Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here and you're going to go down and click subscribe, go ahead and do that now. If you're a return viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Uh, everything we're going to talk about in this video, we can help you with. Uh, once again, thank you for being here. And what we're going to talk about is I've had, I've literally had a half a dozen requests over the last week about how can I connect to multiple open VPN servers from one machine. So I'm gonna show you real quick. We're gonna talk a little bit about the config. We're gonna talk about where the configs go, how they're generated, all that good stuff. And hopefully this will give you a better idea of how you can have multiple configs on one machine. So let's hop over to the computer and take a look. All right, so first, let's start. Uh, I want to start by saying that every open VPN server that you have, whether you've uh, had me work on it, whether it's a Synology, whether it's OpenSense, whether it's PFSense, whether it's name a distribution that supports open VPN besides Edge Router, don't want to talk about that here because it does things differently when you do open VPN. We typically don't recommend that unless it's site to site. But for this, we are talking about specifically your phone, your iPad, your tablet, uh, your laptop, your desktop computer, your Mac, Windows, whatever. Now, the Mac is going to work a little bit different because we do recommend TunnelBlick as the client for Mac when you're running OpenVPN. Everything else, we usually use an OpenVPN client. And on the machine that we're looking at here, I am running the official OpenVPN client. So... I told you all that to tell you this, that uh, every open VPN server that we support for end user, um, like Road Warrior type VPNs, your server, when you create the client, will create a zip file. Now, most of you are probably uh, used to seeing this file called like openvpn.zip. That is what it's called by default. I deal with so many different uh, folders and files and things like that when it comes to this that I always name my my files, my folders, so it makes sense to me. Um, so this is the zip file that came off of my Synology that I use for my VPN. And inside of that zip, I've got four files. I've got the actual .ovpn file. I've got a ca.crt file and a cabundle.crt file. I also have a readme.txt, which tells you where to go to get the client. It tells you how to do an install. It tells you how to install it on a Mac. Like I said, yeah, and see, even in the open VPN suggestions from Synology, they tell you to go use TunnelBlick. And so, and they also have some Linux instructions in there. We should probably do a video on that. Um, but what it's when you want to have multiple connections on the same machine, if you've got all of these devices, let's say you've got two Synologies you're connecting to, so we already know by default that file name is going to be openvpn, you know, .zip, uh, whatever that looks like, um, you want to make sure that you're able to organize those. So if I go down here and I look at my openvpn and I right click on it, because I have multiple connections, I can see the four connections that I've got here. You can see the top one is openvpn server ptl something 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 and then underneath that you can see vpn.willyhow vpn2 and vpn3 these all connect to different vpn open vpn servers so let me show you how that is organized and actually before we get to that real quick i want to show you the actual inside of this open vpn file so I'm going to open this with Notepad, and inside the VPN file, uh, it has this line that says remote. Now, if you've watched any of our OpenVPN setup videos, you know that this is the server name, either the IPS, IP address, or the fully qualified domain name. We prefer to use FQDNs or fully qualified domain names when we can because sometimes IPs change, but we have the ability to keep that fully qualified domain name the same. If we scroll down, we can see this uh, redirect gateway. If we uncomment that, that's going to force all traffic out through our OpenVPN connection. 
D DHCP option here, if we put an IP address in there, that is the DNS server on the inside of the network, or the doesn't even really need to be on the inside of the network, but it is the DNS server that we want to use for this open VPN connection. There's some other things we can do. We can pull routes um, and we can change some of the options. And here you see there's also the CA and some things embedded, some certs embedded in the file. So that is kind of the anatomy of this. And you'll notice I've got this named vpn.willyhow.com.ovpn and that is going to become important here in just a second, especially when you're managing multiple open VPN files. So it's very important that when you have multiple open VPN servers that you download the client files from that server. Don't try to use the um, don't try to use one set of certificates that you pull off of one and just change the server address, it's not gonna work because the, the server on the back end, um, all the certificates, all the keying, everything is gonna be different. It's not gonna match the OpenVPN client from another, you know, from another server. It's just not gonna match. So it's very important that for every OpenVPN server you wanna to connect to, that you're using all of the files that come from that server. Now, on a Windows machine, so we've got our OpenVPN file here. There are two places that OpenVPN files can be stored, okay? So the first is a universal location on the machine, and anything in this path, which would be C colon backslash program files backslash OpenVPN backslash config, any of the configs in here are going to be available to everybody on the machine. I typically don't use that. You know, this is usually like a per user setup, right? So the second place, which you'll see is where all my config configs are, is under the users folder, under Willy, which is my user profile, open VPN config. And so that means if someone else logs into this workstation, they don't have access to those open VPN files. Now, could they get to them? I'm sure they could figure out a way to do to it. But if they open the open VPN GUI and they look at that, they're not going to be presented with those VPN um, selections and I never save my credentials on here so it's kind of a moot point yeah they can get the cert and all that stuff but um, just make sure you're protecting this stuff you don't want them to have it they could get it but we got to really you know figure out what that opportunity cost is back to this so you'll see that I've got the four folders in my open VPN config um, folder and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill into so if you remember, when we went down here and we went to OpenVPN, we saw all four of these and they matched a folder name. But this folder name here, and this is how I do it, I always name the folder name the same thing as the OVPN file because it's the actual OVPN file right here. So we, we went into vpn.willyhow.com. If I change this OVPN file to no vpn.willyhow.com and I come back down here and now you'll see that the name actually updated under the, the client. So it's the actual file name here that is showing up under the client for connection. So for me, the easiest thing to do is to just name the actual config file and the folder the same thing. That way I know what I'm looking at and I don't have to worry about it. Now you'll notice in some of these folders, if we go through these, so that one was VPN. If I go to VPN2, you'll notice that I've got the CA cert, the CA bundle, but under just the Willy How or the, the standard VPN, I've only got a CA cert, right? So some of these open VPN files, and you'll see this one's got a key and all kinds of things. That's why it's important to use the client um, package from your server because some of these files are going to be different and another client file is just not going to work on another open VPN. So I hope that cleared this up. I hope I didn't make this any more uh, confusing than it needed to be. I hope it kind of 
kind of cleared that up for you. So if you've got any questions about this, go ahead and put them down in the comments and I'll answer all the questions that I can. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you'd like to support the channel by uh, using our affiliate links, they are all down below. Don't feel pressure to do that. It is appreciated because it does kick a couple bucks over the channel. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.